Hello, welcome back to another video. And today's video will be continuing the United States of Epic Fails by Bill O'Neill. Uh, today we'll be reading chapter one. Last video we read the introduction. So, chapter one The Plumbers Who Weren't Master Spies. Pretty, pretty dumb. You've probably read about President, President Richard Nixon's Watergate scandal in the early 1970s, which brought down his presidency and caused him to resign in 1974. Unfortunately, what Nixon did or didn't do is still somewhat shrouded in mystery, since he did design and also because many of his top guys who did the dirt for him kept their mouths shut. Nixon's group of dirty tricksters were a collection of CIA assets and right-wing cubans who were led by a lawyer named G. Gordon Liddy. Liddy and his band of operatives called themselves the Plumbers because they fixed leaks and Nixon's, in Nixon's White House. But as much as those guys thought they were some sort of super spies, they were failed losers when it came to espionage. If any of you know this word, I'll spell it out. Please say or pronounce it in the comments. E-S-P-I-O-N a G E. When Nixon became president in 1968, he inherited a heap of domestic and international problems. There were social riots, the Vietnam War was raging, and the economy was unstable because Nixon's hold on power was contingent upon many of these social and geopolitical, geopolitical currents. He was constantly paranoid and felt that he needed to play dirty to get reelected in 1972. So he hired lawyer G. Gordon Liddy to lead his reelection bid. Nixon gave a Liddy gave Liddy plenty of freedom, which led to Liddy using dirty tricks to put the president's opponents in uncomposing posit positions. In, re in reality, most of the tricks failed, but none more so than May 28 and June 17, 1972. Break-ins of the Democrat National Committee, DNCE, in the Watergate office building in Washington, D.C. Liddy, together with fellow plumbers E. Howard Hunt and James McCord, arranged a team of burglars to break into the DNC offices, photograph important and, and photograph important files. Remember, this was 1972, so most information was kept on paper and place and place write-ups. It all sounded like something out of a Fleming or Tom Clancy novel, but in reality, it was an amateur hour. The crew Liddy sent to do the deed did, did place did place listening devices in the office on May 28. But their main target was DNC, Chairman Laurie O'Brien. The problem was the right tap they put on O'Brien's phone didn't work, so the crew had to return to the scene of the crime on June 17. That should have been done. That should have been the first thing the first sign to all involved that this operation was destined for failure. 
As the crew was going through the offices on June 17th, a security guard noticed there were strips of tape placed over several door latches. The plumbers did this so they, so they could more easily enter the rooms without having to break into them each time. This ploy made a scene at first, but upon further thought, it just shows how woefully unprepared they were and how little training they really had in the world of spawnage or crime. The guard removed the guard removed the tape strips, but when he did this rounds sometimes later, he noticed new tape strips were on the door latches, so he called the police. Another plumber, Alfred Baldwin, was supposed to be watching things from a motel room across the street where he was happening, except he was too busy watching a movie. The four burglars were arrested, and qu they quickly gave up the rest of the plumbers. Although Liddy never testified against Nixon or anyone else, the fiscal was enough to end the Nixon presidency. Today, most people know about Nixon scandals, but often overlooked are failed losers known as the plumbers. So that is it for chapter two, and I'll see you in the next video.